I love looking at harvest results because there is so much to learn. And one of the tests that many farmers across the country did this year was to vary the planting population as they move throughout fields and from field to field. Now's your chance to evaluate which planting populations worked with which hybrids or varieties this year. Okay, and here's the reason why I hate that information, because every year the weather's totally different. Last year, we flooded out. This year, we dried out. Well, guess what? Last year, high planting populations were better. This year, lower populations were better. Okay, what's gonna be next year? I don't really know exactly. So it's all kind of relative out there too. If you're in an area that can produce tremendously high yields, you're probably gonna run with higher populations. If you're looking at lower yields, it's usually lower populations. And I'll just give you a specific example of what I'm talking about. With corn, we usually bring up the numbers seven to 10 per thousand. So in other words, if I plant 30,000 plants, that's 30 times seven, that'd be 210 bushels or times 10, that'd be 300 bushels. So in other words, if I plant 30,000 plants per acre, I should be somewhere in that 210 to 300 bushel range. So if I'm now getting right at 300, I go, you know what? I probably should bump my population a little bit to go over 300. If I'm only getting 180 or 150, you're planting too much. And I'm not saying it's bad to plant that population, but what I'm saying is you could save some money, take maybe 10 or $20 out of your corn seed bill and put it to something else. Maybe it's nutrients, maybe it's tile, I don't know. But the point is you don't need that population in our opinion as agronomists. I've gotten a chance to travel to different growing areas around the world and meet a lot of really good producers. And one that I would point out that's done a lot of work on planting populations is Eric Watson down in New Zealand. He's the world record wheat grower and he plants lower populations than we're planting on our farm and getting more than double the yield we're getting. So obviously there's a few things that he's learned over the years. Now one of the cool little trials that he's doing too is looking at different varieties, seeing how many tillers each will produce. We're doing the same thing in corn, looking at how much ear flex can we get out of different hybrids. Or in soybeans, if we have lower populations, how many more branches will they put out? And the answer that we're trying to derive from all this testing is which hybrids or varieties respond to lower planting populations, which ones need higher planting populations. So in addition to your yield level and the weather, you also wanna look at the varieties to see if they can even tolerate varying that population. Two other things I think about here are weed control and fertility. So for example, if you want or need better weed control, that means you need to plant thicker. The more plants you have of whatever it is, corn, soybeans, wheat, it's going to shade the ground faster and now you're going to have that better weed control because don't ever forget, crop canopy is the very best weed killer that there is. On the fertility side, I'd say this, if let's say you wanna bump your corn planting population, don't even dream about doing that if you don't fertilize accordingly. You've gotta have a tremendous amount of potassium in your soil, like thousands of pounds very often, in order to have the adequate potassium you need all through every single day of the growing season to produce a good stock, so you don't have big lodging issues. That's one of the reasons why we see wind tip certain fields over and not tip other fields over. It all has to do with how much potassium is in the soil in addition to copper and manganese and some other nutrients. So really take a look at what do you have for overall fertility before you go bumping that planting population. And as Brian mentioned before, you may look at this as a risk management tool where on the dry years you may benefit from lower population, the wet years you may benefit from higher populations. So you may plant a few different populations across each field on your farm just so you're spreading your risk out because you never know what the weather's going to do. Okay, the last example I want to give is we were talking about higher populations with corn. Let's say it's in good areas, or you know, if you're gonna have a lot of rain. So many times it's in the low ground, we want to plant higher populations with corn. It's the opposite with soybeans. Very often what we talk about here with soybeans is, hey, let's have a higher population on the light ground. I might want to plant 160 or 180,000 plants per acre on the light ground and on the hilltops because that's where the beans don't do that well anyway. That's going to push the beans taller and very often you'll get a little bit more yield. Now in the low ground where you have more white mold, more just diseases in general, there's all kinds of fertility there. You don't need all that population. That's where you could cut the population back. So as a farmer, I still love an average of 130 or 140,000 seeds per acre, but I'm going to vary it depending on my soil type. The cool thing is with modern technology, you can write prescriptions and load it right into your equipment so your equipment will do it automatically as you go through the field. That's really cool. Also, if you're just 
thinking, hey, today I'm going to vary the population and I didn't write a prescription, no problem. Oftentimes with just one press of a button, you can vary that population right now in a field and do some check strips here and there. Well, Darren, I wish with one press of the button, we could control weeds like our Weed of the Week. It's not that easy, but it is fairly easy to control this week's weed. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up next. <music>